Another thing, like a major takeaway from this uh, report by uh, Flexera is the whole widespread adoption of multi-cloud strategies among organizations. And before reading this report, I didn't know uh, there is such a thing and that well, I, 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 I could think of, but I didn't think that it's so wide, uh, so widespread. Uh, this is um, pretty interesting because it's really highlight the big shift in how businesses are, um, you know, managing their cloud environment. And according to the report, like 89% uh, of organizations are now using multi-cloud strategies, which is um, uh, increase from the last year. And this showed that uh, multi-cloud, uh, I don't know, it's not some kind of niche approach and it's uh, becoming uh, the standard way to a uh, way for companies structuring their cloud architecture. Why is it so? It's true that day by day you can see more and more these kind of a uh, connection between, for example, a data center, because there are many mm -hmm. companies that are moving now from the old environments, like a, an old data center. I say all now because it's all because uh, the old concept of the data center. And they have, for example, now one cloud and they need to do this uh, network connection between those. Something like, for example, in this case, Google is very good on that. So, and, but I can so many times that thing. I saw many times when a company was in an old uh, cloud environment like AWS, for example, and they want to move to another environment, like for example, Azure, or they want to move to World Cloud. And during a time of period of time, they, they have both at the same time together. But <clears throat> mm -hmm. I cannot see too much. These kind of companies were, uh, imagine, 50% uh, of the workload is in AWS and the other 50% is in Azure. And those loads are interconnected. And then I have this cluster in, 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 in AWS, but the, the, the cloud function is in, in, in Azure. So these kind of themes at this level, you cannot see currently. What you can see is, for example, this line of the company code in AWS and this line go in, in Azure. Or I have few themes in, in one and the big one is, is in the, in this one. Or, I have everything in, in the data center and I'm moving step by step everything to the cloud, but I live in some things that I cannot move out of the cloud. I live in, in, the, data, uh, in the data center. So this kind of thing is what I saw, you know, but not 30% mm -hmm. uh, of every load is in one of the big three. And then I, I have in that. This, I never saw that in my case. But it's true that currently I think every big company uses multiple clouds hmm. and it's... Like, for example, AWS is the biggest one for sure, but in every company that uses AWS of, of big size, you will somehow find Azure always. In many cases, because all of the identity is usually kind of based around Azure with the Active Directory. Uh, and then if you have Active Directory, you eventually migrate to the Entra ID on Azure, which is the cloud version of Active Directory. So then you're already in this ecosystem of Microsoft. And then in last years, because maybe of Gen AI, you will try using this OpenAI Studio and other AI features in Azure, or maybe you will start using some other offerings you have for like for CSPM and so on. So it's really that you, yeah, you run the same application multiple times in different cloud providers. It's rather case by case. Another popular cases that you use AWS everything, but then for some machine learning and AI stuff, you use Google Cloud because Google Cloud historically is really good with offering services for uh, AI and machine learning with like, whatever, like BigQuery and uh, other stuff that they have. Now it's a bit mixed because everyone forgot that Google Cloud was really good for AI. Now we think that AI is LLM and because of this, we think that the best cloud provider for LLMs is either using OpenAI APIs directly or Azure, but for real like general different kind of machine learning, Google Cloud used to be and still is, is a good choice. Mm -hmm. And many companies are kind of running workloads on Amazon, but then for data stuff using Google Cloud. And another point is what what is the cloud and what we can consider the cloud offering? Because for sure part of this is compute, how you run applications, but for instance, the whole observability stack with the logs, traces, monitoring is also part of the cloud. 
And then company like New Relic or Datadoc or AppDynamics, they are also the cloud. They just focusing on particular services, just for observabilities, don't let you run workloads. But in the end, it's a separate cloud provider with a separate cost. Mm -hmm. And many, many companies don't use, for example, CloudWatch and Amazon, as they just use uh, one of the tools I mentioned for uh, for monitoring. So they just get all the kind of data from Amazon Cloud, push it to uh, observability cloud provider, uh, and use this one for monitoring, alerting, and so on. And in this way, because all of this niche-specific smaller cloud providers that focus on particular feature, be it security or observability or whatever else, they follow the same kind of principles of the cloud. So you, uh, they have pay-as-you-go model, so you pay per gigabyte, per amount of magic, and so on. Uh, you can configure everything with the APIs. So for example, like in Datadog, you can configure everything with the Terraform provider. And then that's also kind of this hybrid setup where you take parts of the features to another cloud providers that really focuses really well on some particular feature set. Basically, if you use different tools, you are already uh, multi-cloud uh, because every other tool is now cloud. Uh, because I have uh, probably more primitive understanding of multi-cloud and I thought that companies are using this for things like you know disaster recovery. Like if one of the clouds, I don't know, uh, fails, workloads can be uh, shifted to another provider, ensuring like business continuity, or things like avoiding uh, vendor lock uh, by spreading loads across multiple providers. Companies are, um, are tied to just one vendors, giving them negotiations, uh, opportunities, and protect them from potential service disruptions if one provider has an outage or something like that. I thought that was the main reason why companies are going multi-cloud. But from what you said, it sounds like it's more of um, a necessity rather than a thing that they do by choice. For example, it's for not a necessity. disaster recovery. <laughs> Sorry, Giri. I only want to say that for disaster recovery it could be <laughs> a bit tricky to have the same <laughs> infra that you have in one cloud provider like AWS and make a, a SAT replica in another provider, like imagine Azure, you know, it could be, could be something yeah, it, complicated. It's all like this part is all in this, I think, mostly existing hypothetical space. Not many mm -hmm. companies do it, uh, but there are companies who are like, yeah, we want to be super independent from AWS, for example, even though if AWS is down, half of internet is down, right? like, yes, yes, even if you find a way to deploy the same stuff to Google Cloud. And then if they go this way, they say, okay, now we only do open source and cloud native, we run everything on Kubernetes, and we try to make it in a way that we can deploy our whole infrastructure with infrastructure as code to any cloud provider that offers Kubernetes. In reality, mm -hmm. like it can work, you can, you can make it work, but then many small things will always differ because for example, identity management on AWS, the EEM service, doesn't exist on Google Cloud, and that's an essential part of anything you do in AWS. Then you have to handle this part. For disaster recovery in general, so that was like about vendor, like lock in into a particular cloud provider. But for disaster recovery, it does not make too much sense usually. If you look at like an, an Pablo and, and I, we know some companies that maybe half of the particular industries in the world depend on and they have just one data center there is no and, and they had it like for whatever 20 years there was just like one data center one particular location without any disaster recovery and the rest mm -hmm. is just hypothetical uh, but if you do need disaster recovery then any cloud provider has like whatever 20 plus regions so if you take amazon you have a region in frankfurt in madrid in paris in milan in stockholm so only in Europe, you already have by now, like maybe 12 different AWS data centers. So it doesn't really make sense for you to do disaster recovery in another cloud provider, because that's probably the most like costly way to do so. The problem is that in case of AWS, previously you had an issue that one data center in in North, North Virginia is down and then the whole of AWS is down. But yeah. since then they refactor it. But it used to be that two or three really core parts of AWS, they 
are only hosted in this North Virginia data center. And then, for example, all the identity stuff goes through North Virginia or used to go. I think they changed the architecture since then. And then no matter how many data centers you have, if this one is down, everything is down. Uh, but that's, again, it's a really, uh, like, you can try to be prepared for this, but you, you cannot really, because it could be that you have disaster recovery into Google Cloud, and then of the root, global root DNS servers is down, and then it doesn't matter how mm. DNS in the world is down. So any <laughs> cloud provider suffers from this. Usually what they, I see they, for disaster recovery is that people, companies have a plan, uh, and that's, for compliance, that's what matters, that you have a plan. You, you don't have to have a real technical implementation that you can disaster recover into another place, but you need to have a document, steps by steps, what you do if Frankfurt AWS data center is done. As long as you have this plan, which says like, okay, we will do this, this, we will like load database dump, and we switch over the DNS and it will take 20 hours, that's already good enough for disaster recovery. But what I want to say that at the end, when you have this multi-cloud, you need to to think in the in the problem with the network, because mm -hmm. when you when you want to send something, imagine that you're using pure multi-cloud with loads in different components. If you want to send some connection from the multi-cloud A to the multi-cloud B, you don't want to go from the internet. So mm -hmm. this is something that you don't want to do. So then you have a problem because then you need to have a a wire, a cable from this data center in Virginia, whatever place, to the data center of the other cloud provider to have a, a real connection, not from internet. Mm -hmm. and, and this is not simple because then you need to use VPMs and uh, you don't want to transfer all the, all the information from your company from internet because this is one of the things. And so th this is one of the, one of the, the main problems when you want to do this lot interconnection between different cloud providers that the every company is different. You're mm -hmm. not going to tell to uh, the AWS, okay, I'm going to have cables interconnected with all the data center of Google Cloud and at the same time of, of Azure. Then in this way, if our customers, they want to, to do this connection, they don't need to go through internet. They can go directly for, through a cable. Uh, this is not working. So it's not mm -hmm. working this way. You can do it. You want to do, for example, for your data center to your own cloud provider. This is something that the company does. So you said, okay, I want to make a, a network interconnection between my data center that is located, imagine, in, in Frankfurt to uh, a Google cloud provider, a Google cloud data center. And then they, they, they go to the switches and they do the interconnection and they do this connection between the, the data center and Google cloud and you don't go through internet. But between companies, it's not working. And this is a problem. So this is another problem with this multi-cloud thing that is mm -hmm. nice idea, but it's not a realistic idea while the mm -hmm. loads needs to go through VPNs. But so, when it comes to data integration, like uh, the, 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 the same report says that um, there is a not, noteworthy increase in data integration, which jumped from uh, 30 something percent to 45% uh, percent this year. And I think like this show that companies, they aren't just using multi-clouds in isolation, uh, then they, they more like integrate their data and application across those environments. And I, I'm thinking about like, how is it like what they do to make sure that their multi-cloud environments are not only effective, but also I don't know, secure because you have to transfer data from one cloud to another, so I can assume that this is, this is more headache than uh, a benefit, like why companies do that. And this, this, this trend increases. I cannot see in, in my experience, most of the cases when I see multi-cloud mm -hmm. is divided by companies, by application. So this app is in, so or this part of the, of the organization is in one cloud provider. This other part is in another cloud provider. So mm. it is what I saw, you know, I never, I never seen, you know, I'm going to have an application spread in three cloud providers mm -hmm. and, and everyone is sending data to that. Could be cases, but in these cases, if you want to do that is when you need to go to these cloud VPMs, because at the end there is no delete cables between those companies. 
All right. Thank you, guys. This was interesting. I hope those who listened to us learned a little bit more and you have more understanding and understanding of the uh, findings by uh, Flexera, what they find in this report. Read it and then listen to our, uh, this episode to understand it better. If you have more questions, you know how where to find us, you know how to approach us, make sure to connect with us and to be connected with us even better. Make sure to be subscribed to our bi-weekly MKDF Dispatch newsletter where we share everything we learn uh, in past two weeks. And thanks for coming. Thanks for listening to us. Uh, make sure to be subscribed for the next episode. We will see you in two weeks. Bye-bye, everyone. There are no challenges that we couldn't overcome. Whether it is immediate infrastructure problems or planning a future project, we won't simply answer your questions. We become a part of your team to help you complete the mission. Our solutions consider the interests of your business and the combined expertise of the industry as our staff is made up of more than a dozen experts in different areas who share decades of field-tested experience and knowledge with you.